This conference will now be recorded. And I know so some of the students here attending from school like a eighth standard ninth standard students also so if you guys i know like uh, you know you people already attended all the conditional statements loops and working with list tuple like collections right so also we have discussed how to create a function how to create a module how to create a package and then we discussed more about file handling and then also we discussed regular expressions those things so you just try to understand whatever like you know you feel like okay you can just try to understand those concepts and some advanced concepts for school level i don't think it's required you can ignore it but still if you want if you want to practice you can just watch two more times or like two or three times the same video and try to understand the concepts okay so in the last session we discussed regex and the importance of regular expressions we discussed like <clears throat> name validations mobile number validations email id validations right like that we used now okay so we do have uh, working with this all are again modules if you are aware and then it will be very easy to understand so what is model how to use the module syntax if you are aware it will be very easy to understand to work with uh, json or work with database or work with uh, whatever like cloud aws or whatever the platforms right so before going to start json also uh, we have a exception handling right so exception handling so generally so this is i'm just giving idea how we write exception handling here in python so generally we have a two types of errors and we write python code we get two types of errors one is syntax errors and the other one is runtime errors so generally we can say compilation error and runtime error so errors in python compilation errors okay compilation error and runtime errors tell me some compilation errors any idea anyone compilation errors hmm syntax error is a compilation error like missing single quotes missing double quotes right open parentheses or closed parentheses this type of errors syntax errors and also indentation er error is compilation error right indentation error is compilation error so whenever if you are getting any compilation error whenever if you are getting any compilation error the compilation errors it's a human error that means python says that i already provided the syntaxes before writing your code you must aware of it how to write that syntax let's say if i write print you should know print is a function then we must need to write open and closed parentheses and then inside the quotes you can write like this let's say now you missed this quote or maybe you missed this quote like closed bracket 
Python it will give you error that is a compilation error so now the compilation error whenever if you are getting that is programmers responsibility that means as a programmer we should fix that as I told that Python says okay I provided already syntax for the print you must aware of it how to write that statement how to write that function and inside the function how to write argument everything you must aware of it if you are not aware then that is your problem you must need to understand that first and then you try to write it that is how python it says because compilation error is human error so whenever if you are getting any compilation error that is our responsibility we should fix that now coming to the runtime error so compilation error we understood example like syntax error like indentation error runtime errors runtime errors at the time of execution we will get actually first it checks all the compilation means it checks first all the syntaxes all the lines and then it starts line by line execution so i think if you see the first or second session you will get idea like how exactly the python it works right we discussed that so runtime errors we have a different errors like we have type error now if you check here for example i'm just trying to open this command prompt okay see DIR of underscore underscore built ins if you check. You can see there are a lot of errors, right? So something index error, something module not found error, something OS error, something you can see there are different errors, right? So here. So it included all both uh, compilation and runtime errors. For example, zero division error. So this is a one runtime error. So like this, we can see here there are different errors. So when we get this at the time of execution, like type error, something index error means like if we, if you are trying to access index number, let's say indexes are available only five, but you are accessing the fiftieth index, not possible. Key error if key is not available from the dictionary but you are trying to access some key not possible that is a runtime error same way zero division error we just saw that a zero division error is nothing but if you're trying to let's say now see for example when we use calculators i'm just i just opened calculator and then i'm trying to perform something 10 division 2 is giving result but if i use 10 a division of 0 so the denominator now 0 so cannot divide by 0 so we're getting error right so we cannot divide by 0 so when we use that then we will get python it will send you zero division error okay but what is this exception handling here we are handling these runtime errors try to understand we are not handling the compilation error we are handling the runtime errors so how to handle these runtime errors there are a lot of different uh, types of concepts here so we use try and accept block and we can write try and multiple accept blocks And we have a try except finally like this I'm just see um, generally only for exception handling for my regular batches I generally take minimum four sessions 
means four hours right so four hours required to understand deep drive about this but i'm just giving an idea here you need to understand based on that like how we can handle this okay so it is not generally like possible to complete all the things in 30 hours what we committed or 30 days sessions it means uh, it uh, excluded weekends right so it is difficult but i'm trying to provide all the information whatever the topics we have and then how we are actually writing so if you see the try and accept how we use see now i'm trying to create a new script file So I'm creating a script file here. And save as type. All types and then save. Now, for example, I'm taking some input, something x equal to int of input of enter a number and then y equal to int of input of enter a num2 i'm going to take two numbers here and something i'm performing result equal to x at division y and then print result And then also, I'm trying to write some continuation of the program by. Okay, now I'm just trying to execute this code now. Python. You can use IDE or you can use normal text editor. I'm using text editor because we already discussed how to use PyCharmand. So, day 23 underscore script dot py now you can see enter a number so 10 and then 2 i'm giving then result 5 and then by again i'm just writing 10 and then 0 now see here we are getting some error 0 division error division by 0 so the second value I provided this denominator 0, so 0 division error, we are getting the error, division by 0 not possible. Okay, so what is the problem if you are getting this error? The problem is, it is stopping the execution, where in the third line now. So which means it will not execute the remaining lines even if the syntaxes are fine. It stops the execution abnormally. So this is called abnormal termination. So whenever if runtime error occurs, abnormal termination, it is stopping the execution. It is not executing the remaining lines. But now, even if you are getting error, even if you are getting error, I want to stop. Means I don't want to stop the execution. I just want to execute all the lines here, even the continuation of the program. If, if you are getting error, just display some user understandable message saying that, okay, this, zero division, this is a zero division error, division by zero not possible. You provide denominator value, different value or second value, different value like that instead of zero. And then I don't want to stop the continuation of the program execution. So that is possible with this try and accept. So the syntax we write like this try block first. We try in the try block. It's not like if else again. Say if else is totally different. If you write if else, that is condition based. But here, this is based on the runtime errors. So try block here, if the try block is success, then we can write accept block and continuation of the program. So let's say if try block is success here, and then directly it will go continuation of the program. 
if try block failed then it will execute accept block and from there it will go continuation of the program if try block failed then only accept block is executing let's say now we just observed 10 division of 0 not possible so i don't want to stop the execution just execute this accept block then go to continuation of the program like that we can do okay so now see here the same code i'm going to write inside the try and accept block okay so i'm just writing try block now only this statement i'm trying to write in try block and then accept block print we don't know what is error assume then i'm just writing something something went wrong okay. so the only thing is i don't want to stop the continuation of the program now if i am executing again now if you check 10 i am giving 2 i am giving same result 5 and then back nothing different but when I'm, when I'm trying to provide a second value as 0, now it is not stopping the execution. It executed accept block saying that something went wrong and then back. So the purpose of this try accept block is what I don't want to stop the continuation of the program. I don't, I don't want to stop here abnormally. It should execute all the lines even if there is some error. So, if you think, okay, we may get here some error, then we write that particular lines in a try accept block. Now, what is then try accept and uh, try and uh, multiple accept blocks? Now, for example, see, the same code again I am writing and uh, I am just trying to write here instead of the value assume that i'm going to provide something python so i'm providing python but it is trying to convert as an integer it is not possible because it's a characters and we are getting a value error invalid literal for int with based and it is trying to convert as an integer but that is not possible here right so we got a value error. This is a runtime error again. This is a runtime error. But now tell me why we got runtime error even if I write try accept block here. Even if you write try and accept block, why we are getting runtime error now? Any guess here, anyone? Guys are with me. Because of data type, okay, but we have a try except block, right? Exactly. So the error it occurs outside the try block, okay. So try block started here. But error it came here. Try block is starting here. Error it, it is coming outside the try block. Getting my point. So what generally we can do. I am trying to write this try block here. Okay. Because even. here the values even here the values if you are not providing integer value we are getting error so that is the reason this complete code i defined in a try block now 
Now if I'm trying to provide Python, we will get actually what something went wrong and then by. Because now we defined this code in try block. Okay, but what is that something we don't know, right? So the end user maybe they'll not understand what is this something. So with the try and multiple accept blocks, we are going to write like this accept block. And uh, here, if you observe the possibility errors only, we are going to get either zero division error or maybe value error. Just now we got that. So I'm writing whenever if I'm getting zero division error, this error should be same name what error we are getting. It's a case as to we should provide the same name. Okay. So accept zero division error. If I'm getting this zero division error, then I'm trying to print something denominator or maybe second value should not be zero here. Okay, now see, I'm just writing 10, zero. It, uh, it raised a zero division error and then immediately this accept block zero division error, it understood that. Immediately it is giving second value should not be zero and then one. Now again, I'm giving Python here and then now it's not a zero division error. It is a different error and then it will go to the accept block. It will print something went wrong. But I want to provide for this as well. So accept block, it's a value error, right? Value error. Print uh, both input value should be int type. Again, I'm just running it now. So whenever if it is raising a value error, immediately this particular block will execute now. See, both input values should be int type and then one. And if, whenever if I'm getting a zero division error, a zero division error related block will execute. Second value should not be zero and then one. So this is how we write the exception handling here in Python. I hope it is clear now, right? So what is the use of this now? I don't want to stop the continuation of the program execution. So whenever if it is terminating abnormally, we write this exception handling to stop that and then to execute on the continuation of the program lines. And what is finally? Finally is something it is important when we work with the database or when we work with something, assume you are, you are actually trying to install some packages in Linux operating system. And uh, once the package installation completed, I want to clean up that all the files, whatever it created in temp. So which means the finally block here in Python we are writing. So first try block, we are trying some code, right? Assume this code is now connecting to the database. So in the try block, we are writing connecting to the database. So this is a database here. And uh, this database, let's say this is a MySQL database or maybe Sybase or Oracle. And uh, for some reason in this project, for this database, there are limited connections. So means only, assume that only 2000 connections can connect. So at a time, 2000 
2000 connections 2000 connections easily you can connect assume there is a limit for that connections only 2000 connections or for your understanding easily 100 connections okay only 100 people can connect at a time for this db now there are a database team and then they are connecting for their like some queries they are executing and some other teams also connecting for maybe getting some data something like you know uh, getting some records based on maybe they, their requirement is different and parallelly our python script also connecting to the database and executing some queries and then assume your python code not closing the connection so it keep on connecting and executing the queries keep on connecting and executing the query but not closing the connection so what happens once 100 connections over and then new user or new connection not happens now so new user cannot connect because the limit only 100 So this is something deadlock situation. So no one can able to interact with the database. So this is very dangerous, right? So generally it will be more connections, but I'm just giving example. I'm taking 100. Then what is the solution? Whenever if you are writing any Python code, once the process completed, you must need to disconnect this. Once the process completed, you must need to close the connection. You must need to close the connection, right? That means what in that case, this connection is open now. So this closing connections we write in finally block. Why only in finally block? You may think, okay, we can directly write here. Try block is here. Okay, so the syntax is like this. Try block is here, and then something except block here, and then you may think, okay, instead of writing finally block, we can write here continuation of the program. Anyway, even this try block failed, continuation of the program is executing. It will close the database connection. We think like that, right? No. Assume that try block failed, except block is trying to execute, and in except block also having some issue. By mistake, maybe we have added some junk here, means some wrong code. And uh, this except block also raising exception now. If except block is raising exception, it will not go continuation of the program. It will stop the execution here in the except block. But this is very rare cases, but still there is a possibility. So if except block is raising an exception, it will not go and execute the continuation of the program. So if you write here, the connections assume that the first line it connected second line having some error first line database connected but second line having error then it raised exception but connection it already happened right and then it raised exception and it came here and then here also there is a problem and it is not going to the connection closed option so if you write a finally block no matter whether try block success or fail no matter whether except block success or fail finally block must execute so which means in the try block first line we define for db connection second line we got some error it came to the except block except block failed finally block will execute first and then it will go to the continuation of the program but since final except block failed finally block will execute and it will stop the execution it will not go and execute continuation of the program. I hope it is clear now, right? What is the purpose of finally?
So this is one use case. The another use case is what for the cleanup purpose. Cleanup is what let's say there are some five packages we are installing. And uh, while installing the packages and all, the, the, the installation related, maybe the temp files are generally, we can see here, percentile TEMP, percentile in Windows also. We can see here, like uh, there are temporary files, right? It generated. So this temporary files, Maybe it's a plugins or maybe it's a some temp files whenever if you are trying to open some, let's say now we are using GoToMeeting. So the GoToMeeting support files, maybe it generates in temp file. After closing that, automatically it will clean up. Same way, whenever if you are running any particular package, it creates some temp files in Linux also in the temp folder. But those files which it should clean up that means what once the script completed it will clean up but uh, where generally we write that cleanup process in the finally block why again in the finally block assume that here there are five packages we are running four packages successfully executed and fifth one having some issue and it raised exception 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 also in the except block also having some issue Right. So if except block also having some issue, if you write directly cleanup process means what the temp files, it will not delete. And then why we need to clean up that temp? Let's say if 100% full the temp, the server, it will go hung state. The file system should not reach 100%. So if it reaches, if it, uh, it, if, if it goes to hung state and then who is the culprit? Our Python script. It's because you are not writing finally block and then you are not cleaning up properly and then keep on generated these files, temp files and then it reached 100% full. And then assume maybe if that server is in production, maybe we'll get up some P1 issue and and you need to provide RCS for that. There are a lot of things involved. So generally, like we always write safe side these finally blocks while doing these cleanups, while disconnecting the databases like that. So that's the importance of finally block here. Okay. Now I'll take some simple example based on file handling because we know the file handling concept. So what I'm trying to do now, I'll try to open the file in the tribe block. Okay. Something file object equal to open off file name test1.txt with our read mode. And then print F4 file object I'm trying to print. And then I'm just trying to print F4 dot read line, one line I'm trying to read here. And then accept block. In case if file not available, then file not found error. We need to check that. the exact error. There is a file not found error. I'm trying to copy this. So in case file is not available, then I want to print this error. Print the given file not exist. That's the reason it is not opening. Maybe some other error which is which we don't know. Maybe I'm just writing safe side this accept lock. Something went wrong. Let's try to run it. 
So read line is a syntax error. Syntax errors are our responsibility, I told that, all right? Now you can see the file is open because this file is available. First line it printed and uh, continuation of the program also I'm trying to write here. It is giving all the outputs. Okay, now I'm just trying to open this. This file is not available. And then see the given file not exist by. Assume that I am using f4.close is here. Now what happens is f4 is not defined. Why f4 is not defined? f4 will create only if in case the file is opened. Now this file object closed actually. But if file is not open, this FO it will not create, right? So FO is nothing. If it is nothing, then why you need to close the file? And it's giving error saying that name FO not defined because it's not generated that object, that variable not created. And also now, if you observe, Since this file is not exist now, we are getting the given file not exist and the file not found error we got. So what I'm trying to do now, I'm just taking some variable none, something like uh, maybe some fo equal to none, which is a null value. And this null value I'm taking here, none is a null value. If fo not created this means see if file is opened then fo it will create a file object and then none it will replace with this file object if not created then fo value still it will be a none only so i'm writing now finally block in the finally block i'm saying that okay if fo value if it is not equal to none then close this. See the finally block now. I'm saying that if your four value not equal to none, that means what? When it will be not equal to none? Only in case if file is opened. File object will create. If file object creates, then this condition fail. Then it will close the file. It is closing the file object. If not opened, I don't want to close it where we are writing this in the finally block. Why finally block we discussed already. So now if you check, I'm going to write like this now. So print inside finally block. And then also I'm trying to write forever understanding. Print closing F4. So now see, now see this, given file not exist, finally block it reached here, except block it executed at the given file not exist because this open file, the file is not available, file not found error it raised, the given file not exist it executed and then it is going to the finally block because all the times finally block will execute, now it, it is there inside the finally block but this condition wrong now because fo value still none, closing fo not executing. But let's say something test1.txt, this is available now. It will open this file now. Now you can see the file object created in the try block. First line it printed in the try block. Accept block not executed. This accept block not executed, but still finally is executing. Now you can see inside finally block. Right, inside finally block, 
closing file object and then by getting my point now now see I'm just writing by mistake something A which is not available. There is error, name error. So we are getting name error, but first file it opened and we also got a read line message. First two lines it successfully executed, but there is a problem here. And if there is a problem, immediately it raises exception, but this is something name error and which is something unknown error here. So that is the reason I defined accept block. Now you can see the accept block, it executed something went wrong. So the something went wrong, it executed. And finally block is executing now. It's not any issue for the finally block. And closing F. Now assume that inside this exception block also, I defined something wrong statement. But the last time, continuation of the program it executed because in accept log there is no problem. But accept log now there is a problem. Now if you observe here, you'll get complete idea. So first uh, FO it executed, printed first line, print a problem. It will execute this accept log. Something went wrong. It executed and then B, which is an error in the accept log. It is stopping the execution, but immediately finally block will execute inside finally block closing FO. It closed the file object. Later, it is giving the error messages. See this. Now, if you observe here, continuation of the program is not executing, but finally block it executed. So that's the importance of finally, whenever if you are cleaning up something or whenever if you are closing something file objects or database connections, we use this. Okay, so I hope it is clear now. Right. Is that clear or any questions now? Right. Okay. So now we will see. Working with uh, JSON. So for all this, like we know, for only file handling, we no need any module. But if you want to read any other extension files, we, we need a modules for that. So whenever if you are working with something like uh, working with the JSON or working with the J database, what is required? The required things here, okay. You must aware of file handling concept, how to read the data, how to write data, because we are going to use the same again. Also, you must need to aware of JSON module name. What is the module name we use for JSON and how to use that module we should aware of it. Similarly, for working with the database as well, we should know what is the module name for the database and then how to use that module. So the modules concept we discussed in detail we covered that how to create our own module, how to check where all the built-in modules available and how to use those built-in modules. Also, we discussed how to install third-party modules and then how to use it. And what are the different syntaxes available? We discussed two different syntaxes and then if you are using two different syntaxes like import, module name, and then how to use the property we discussed model name dot property name. and second syntax we covered that from model name import property name and then if you are using that syntax directly you can access the property but what is the advantage what is the disadvantage we covered and then packages concept also we covered combination of our collection of modules is a package if you are really good with that 
and then it will be very easy to understand if you are working with any the platform related like this now like uh, databases or something json these all the things i'm not going to explain what is json why we are using because that is not my task here my task is how we can access that json file with python similar way what is the database why we are using how to write queries i'm not explaining that i'm explaining only how we can connect using with python i hope you understood right because it takes a lot of time again so we are only covering that means what you should aware of this skill already then only you can understand how to use python for the database let's say if you ask me question like you know how we can automate aws with python you should aware of it aws as well as python then only you can automate that if you if you are expert in python and if you are not aware of any aws services you cannot do that so whenever if you are working with platform related we, we must need to aware of platform knowledge as well as this python skill and then we can you know combine these two with some modules and we can simply write the code we can automate that okay so now we will see the json module and try to understand whenever if you are working with any like third party modules or you know some specific uh, the platform related the first step you need to understand no one knows these concepts it's not like simply like you know we know what is list means you can understand simply you can theoretically and also the practical example we know how to check the methods and then how we use because that the dollar small concepts but if you go to the model level there are there are one cr plus modules right so if you see the py pypi we already discussed there are one crore plus files each file is one module we can say this many modules available here no one knows about these many modules no one knows all modules so based on the requirement what is the model how to get that model and what is the documentation we should find out that documentation and then we copy the code and then we edit based on our requirement that is how exactly we do in real time okay it's not like opening the file and directly writing the code right so we are not ai machines we don't know that so we need to search that and then we copy it we modify based on requirements so okay now how we do this now for example json here assume i don't know what is the model name for json so what is the first step we should find out the model name so simply search here python plus json i am writing and i am trying to open different uh, communities or websites from here first i am checking is there any different names for this json modules or only one unique name i opened almost 5 6 websites and i'm checking python json just check what is the module import json and also it mentioned this is a built in package so means it is already available in python once if you install python by default uh, json package is available so we can simply without installing anything we can simply go to the interactive mode and then import json and we can verify like this yes it is available so this is a built in module okay this is a built in module like re regular expression module we used right in the last session like that okay so we observed something this is a built in module and json okay if you want to just a brief understanding json is actually what syntax for storing and exchanging the data json acronym is something javascript object notation 
this is acronym right so javascript object notation instead of calling this name calling the first first every word first character json like that but the purpose is basically exchanging the data between servers like whenever if you are working with something apis most of the time the data we will get in a json format and that json format if you want to read you have to use this model why this model is required we observed okay json data it's not like a normal text file data so we need to understand that json data how it is and then if you want to convert that like a python dictionary style and all we use this model let's see now i'm trying to again verify in python documentation in python documentation also it is saying import json only and similarly some other websites also i'm randomly checking yes it is same and then check here it is same okay so request is another model if you want to get the data from api means from website if you want to get we use a request i told that this json also generally we use combination with request because whenever if you want to get the data from somewhere some websites then you can use this request model it is simple like you can use request dot get and then you provide the website name it will give you that you know the response object and then response dot json you can convert that completely in json format from there we use json again simple like that okay so we are understanding json now you can add on top of it this module so we are trying to read the data from json file but uh, whenever if you are actually getting the data from any web it is giving in a json format or if it is not giving then creating in one variable and converting into json format like this so for that another module request module using so you have to understand the modules like what is importance and how we are using if you check based on your requirement i don't know which platform you are in you just search based on your requirements and then try to uh, search what is the model name request is not a built in module again you need to install this okay let's see now json so again i'm checking in another website here it mentioned again import json so everywhere everyone saying the model name is json so we decided that it's a only one model it's a json okay import import json and then generally we discussed already if you are using any model it is best practice check dir of json what are the properties available there are some properties now we can see like a coder something decoder something dump dumps something encoder load loads scanner like that some properties but i don't know anything about this property as well. okay because i just searched this module we are not aware what is this model about first of all and how to use this model we don't know now slowly i am trying to understand this documentation help of json or maybe if you are not satisfied with this documentation you can search in google or maybe you can use some chat gpt is nowadays we have right a lot of resources and you'll, you can see what exactly this model uses and why people are using check some examples so that you'll get idea so now if you see in this description it mentioned that javascript object notation and then this is the complete documentation page and also it provided some examples here import json something json.dumps 
we don't know what is the dumps and uh, something compact and coding it provided some code here and I'm just checking the documentation like that ah, so if you go down then there is a some more documentation it provided whenever if you are using JSON there is a JSON equivalent names like object in JSON we call it as array in JSON we call it as a string in JSON we have a number which is integer number which is a real and JSON we write boolean value true lowercase t capital sorry the lowercase f and null null is a null value you know if you see just now we used in python null value right what is that none it's not a null so it clearly mentioned that in python if you are using dict in json it is a object in python if you are using list in json it is array in python if you are using capital t true and then it is lowercase python none in json it's null python to json it provided this right now why we need to understand because if you check the json file structure okay so see this this is something json string if you observe it is as it is like python dictionary so this is a some json some json string it is like like as it is like a python dictionary name colon john a is colon 30 ct colon new york but assume that it's a string in json it's not a dictionary it started single quote ended single quote what is the problem now see here this is a json string right so i'm just copying this this is a json string you cannot access x of you know name here like a key not possible why not possible this is a string it's a json string see this it's a string you may think okay we can write this like a dictionary then what is the use of json we are using a json text right now it is a dictionary okay but i am using something json string so if you see the type here type of x it is a string type of x it is a string but it's a json string basically because the type the string type if you check here it says json string so from this string my requirement i want to access only name or i want to access only age i want to access only city or maybe i'm going to write some more ever understanding car and in uh, json there is a json string right in json it's a null means i'm saying that car null car is not there and then also i'm going to write something married so john is actually married i'm writing true married true some other information i'm giving and this is a boolean value don't provide in a quotes there is a null value don't provide in a quotes if you provide in a quotes it treats like a string again so I'm writing lowercase t because I'm writing a JSON string. I'm not writing Python dictionary. Try to understand. So we, if you're trying to print this now, it will give you as it is the text. The string and then print x here. It will give you as it is text. See, as it is, it is printing coronal married now 
if you want to access this based on the key first step is what we should convert this we should convert this json string to python dictionary so try to understand we are converting json string to python dictionary this is one case another case maybe there is a json file so i have to convert this json file to python dictionary this also we should know the same way assume i am i am actually trying to write python dictionary to json file so you should also know this python dictionary to json file how to write it or maybe only python dictionary to json string how to convert that is the reason the equivalent names you should aware of it in the documentation we just copied that because whenever if you are copying automatically it will change this if you are using this mode so what is the first one json string to python dictionary you just search actually if you see there is a there is actually here concept json dot load but i am trying to search it here is it correct or not see this json dot load <clears throat> so json dot load function is present in python built in json module this function is used to parse the json string that means it will actually convert into python dictionary and there is a one more json dot loads you know we observe this properties here see this load loads it is available the same thing actually they are saying what is loads function in present in python built in json module this function is used to parse the json string but what is the difference between these two whenever if you are using json dot load and loads okay now see this loads basically it is just to parse the normal string like this it is a string normal string you can parse but load which is json file maybe you can see the example here that's what i told you need to take some examples like this and see there is a example there is a json string and using with the loads it converted into python dictionary object now there is a python dictionary from there you can access the data same way you can see maybe there is a something json file and it is trying to open this json file with the load we will see this both the codes now so here now you no need to write anything just copy the code that's what i told and i am trying to copy the code here but my requirement is actually what x variable i want to convert so i'm just removing this the variable name is x here so this is a something student details okay jan is a student maybe and then print student details now here i converted this json string into python dictionary and then i'm printing a python dictionary now from there you can access name you can access age now see in the python dictionary what will be the output of this true or null okay it should convert as a python style like a null will be a none true will be a capital d like this now i'm trying to execute there is a some syntax error json dot load json not defined okay you need to import the module first now see this so first uh, type x is actually string right and then we converted that json string to python dictionary so this is the dictionary sorry uh, we printed x i'm trying to print and 
here I'm trying to print so that you'll get idea okay I'll see this. So first time it's a JSON string. That is the reason car, null, marry, true as it is, it is printing. And then we converted with a JSON dot loads of X into Python dictionary. Now displaying the dictionary data. Now see the car, none, marry, true. So once if you converted, you can access the data, whatever the values based on the keys that is possible. So that's the reason we converted it into JSON string to Python dictionary object. Similar way, there is another syntax here, which is for file. Now let me try to create something data.json. Now this is a screenshot. But okay, I'm just trying to copy the same code. Now see this. What we are using JSON dot load. So we understood two things here. JSON file to Python dictionary. JSON dot load. JSON string to Python dictionary. JSON dot loads. Okay. These are the properties we are using. And fine. So now, now if you check import JSON and then data.json, this file is not available basically, we'll get the error. File not found error. So I'm trying to create this data.json file now. Data.json. Save as all types. And we need some JSON file content. See this started with like this quotes, right? Or I'll copy copy this in a JSON file. I'm going to write here name, age, city, car, null, married, true. Okay. See now, this is a JSON file, a similar style uh, actually, right? So started with curly bracket, ended curly bracket, and between that key values we have. Maybe it's a multiple keys, multiple values you can provide. I just provided the same text in a JSON file. This is JSON file null true everything it is same and now with open this is the syntax we are using to open a file right so with open data.json but we are trying to open a json file now you need to understand two things here if i open directly this file what happens now see I'm just trying to print here for i in JSON file print i. Okay. I'm not using any JSON module. I'm directly reading the file as it is like a normal text file. What happens now? It will read like a normal text file as it is, it is printing. Now, even if you assign to the variable car null, it will be there as it is. You cannot define in Python as a null, right? It should be a none. And you cannot access this data based on the keys now. So just it is directly, we read the string and we printed it. So what is the advantage now we are using this JSON module 
once if you are reading the file we are converting that data into python dictionary object so that's the reason see opening the file is okay the same syntax and then before assigning to the variable we are converting that data into json dot load of that json file which means that object we are converting into python dictionary object so data it is a python dictionary now if you check the type of data it will be a dictionary and then now we don't have these keys here right so keys are different what are that keys now like name something married i want to use that Take it is a lower case or upper case, capital M. It's a case as defined. Okay. Now I'm trying to execute this and see this. Now type is actually what? It's a dictionary. We converted that JSON file data. We converted into Python dictionary, and then we understood like data of name is done. Married, you can see it is true capital T. We are getting it because it's a dictionary data now. So, if you want to, and if you want to understand the JSON file, what concepts required? One, modules concept required. How to use this module? Two, dictionary concepts required to access the data based on the keys. Three, file handling concepts required to read the data from the file. So that is the reason I told dictionary is more important if you are reading JSON file again. I hope it is clear now. Yes or no? Any questions in this? Yeah, we'll take a break now, small break, five minutes, and we'll continue. I'll be back in five minutes. This conference will now be recorded.
Okay. Now, same way, we should find out see the code now, right? Everything I copied. And then I modified based on my requirements here. That's it. Most of the times we do the same, okay. So if you know how to copy the data, means how to copy the relevant uh, code or program, whatever, not only for the programming, right, even for other jobs as well means if you are working with something any any platform so most of the times we search the relevant things in google and then we find out the matching thing and then we copy it and then we paste and edit so that's the reason copy paste edit if you know 90 percent software jobs done most of the times especially for programming and copy paste and edit so you need to know how to edit also based on requirements then only you can able to write it okay so now python dictionary to json file python dictionary to json string so i'll give you this and then you try last one uh, python dictionary to json file If I have a Python dictionary, I want to write into JSON file how to write it. And it is saying dump. Okay. See this. This is the student details. <clears throat> it's a Python dictionary here. And then you can see converting and writing the JSON object to the file with open sample.json with the write mode as file object and then dump that student details with this file object. So you can try this is something like a json.dump only. Press load yeah loads and load right same thing dump and dumps <clears throat> I copied the code and then see here it created json dot file now if you go and open this json dot file here what is the file name sample dot json here is the one see this file it created and uh, the best practice always try to write this what something married true for our understanding so that we'll get idea this is a dictionary right and uh, something now rerun again it actually overriding this you can see see automatically it changed this true lower case none it replaced with null so this is possible because we are using json module and trying to trying to dump this into json file format so that is the importance generally the modules right okay
Now, if you are working with the database, the first step we you should decide what is the database you are going to use. Okay. There are a lot of databases, like maybe if assume you are using my thing, MySQL, and the SQL at three by default we will get with Python. So SQL at three module you will get by default. So if you want to practice, even if you don't have any databases in your system, go with SQL at three, so that you can practice with Py, like Python, how we can actually interact with uh, database okay just search sql 3 something i'm trying to open here yeah we can see and see like don't copy as it is now if you observe here print it's a it's a function, right? But they define like a statement. Maybe this code they written in Python 2 point versions. So you need to write based on that. So this is something SQL 3. SQL 3 by default it will be there in Python because Python itself it will provide this database. It's a lightweight database. You can check it. Import SQL 3 is there. There is a built-in, okay, built-in module and built-in database, we can say, if you are installing Python. So, for SQL 3, you can go through this document. You get idea. Similar way, for example, we have Oracle, or we have a Sybase, or MongoDB, MariaDB. There are different databases. And... Uh, SQL Server. Say I'm just trying to search Python SQL Server. And we will get some, this is SQL Server, it's a Microsoft product, right? So we'll get some, what is the, you know, database model. Now we need to understand one important thing here. If you are good in maybe programming languages like C language or C++ or Java, we use a ODBC. ODBC is a driver which is open database connectivity. Is an open is generally using for to connect any database with the C language or C++. If you see here, what is ODBC used for? So it allows applications to access the data in database management systems, DBMS, using with SQL as standard for accessing the data. So this ODPC is required, this is a driver. And same way for Java, JDBC is required, right? That is a Java database connectivity. Java database connectivity for Java, we need to install this driver. ODBC and JDBC. So for programming languages, these are the standard drivers that enable programmers to write database connectivities. But in Python, in Python, we are not using any specific drivers installations separate. Then how this Python it can communicate the database that is with module the module itself it will take care of this all the things let's say now for example if you see if you are using sql server the module name itself if you observe sql server sql driver is pyodbc the name it provided like that pyodbc This is the, actually what, this is the model, but internally it understands like a driver. Now PYODBC, 
these are not inbuilt models try to understand because python says that we don't know which database you are going to use that's the reason they are providing only just sql at 3 so py odbc is not available there are n number of databases which database you are going to use in your project based on that database you need to install the model maybe it's a something oracle mysql sql server mongodb or mariadb or sybase db2 we don't know right there are different databases so py odbc the model not available there is a third party model it's a platform related module oracle model by default not available mysql model not available sybase not available you need to install based on your requirement this is first step now if you want to work with any database example i provided mysql sql 3 so sql 3 you can go through these steps or same oracle mongodb and then something sql server right there are some steps we have to follow when we work with the database the first step is database should install things like if not not available database in our system we should install that but real time it is the case is different real time what happens we use a database server separately for that our python code will connect to the database server and then it will execute the code there but if you are practicing this in your local machines you need to know you first you need to install the database by default database is not available right if you are using windows microsoft uh, windows 10 or windows whatever uh, operating system so database should install maybe if you want to let's say you are already using oracle or something mysql in your system then okay you can just install the model name and then you can work with that we will discuss that how to work but if not install you need to install based on your like what you think like what databases you want to use and then you just try to install the databases first my suggestion if you don't have any databases Python, if you want to understand, just use SQL 3 by default it is available. You can just go through that document. So, for me, in my system, I have already installed MySQL. You can see MySQL, it is there. So I installed MySQL, so we will get by default MySQL Workbench, MySQL Shell, everything, right? There is a mysql shell how to install you just go through that steps okay download that file and then go through it and once if it is there then python should install means python also should be there to work with that python plus database we already installed python i'm just giving id and then python module for the db database so what is the module let's say for example how to find out the model name that is easy we just we just found that there is a module for sql server which is a py py odbc so for sql server examples for sql server module name we just observed this is the module for sql 3 it's a by default uh, database sql 3 itself is a module name now i want to check same thing for mysql same thing for oracle okay what is the module name for mysql i'm just searching now. python Plus MySQL, I'm searching. 
you can take like third party websites also like this or if you first time if you are searching best practice you find out this from original community so that is the reason again i am just checking from original community mysql community here in the mysql community connector python coding examples yeah, it is there mysql.connector itself. So that is the mysql.connector module name. Or I'm writing db name and then module name. Everything I am searching from the Google only, right? So Oracle. And then I'm trying to search Oracle module as well here. Official community can take first. You know, you'll get like a lot of other communities as well. So if you want to simply get that, go to other communities, you will get easily the module name because they explain simply. But also you can val verify it from original community whether they are, it is using the same module or not. So it is saying that the model name is cx underscore oracle and check some steps if you have yeah see pip install cx underscore oracle this is the step it provided because it's not a built-in model and then you can see how they are using import model name i told already try block right so see the try block for connections and accept block for to get any errors finally block to close the connection this is what we discussed right so in the accept in the try and accept block so everyone follow the same standards generally same style so cx underscore oracle is the model name i copied this one two three four four databases we observe now how to search and find out the model name now you can just think like that any other databases you can search the model name same style Now what is the next step? The next step is the common steps for databases. First step, okay, how to connect a database with Python. I'm just giving the just a overview how we can connect. I'll show you some examples. Like we will see CRUD commands, create, read, update, and delete like that now first how to connect so generally these steps we follow like this first we need to create a connection object create a connection object okay. and then the second step is create a cursor object and third with the cursor object execute sql queries whatever like queries you are trying to run it and then close the cursor object and then close the connection object that's it whatever database you are using these are the common steps now we will take simple understanding i am going with some uh, random examples now sql sorry the mysql and oracle and sql server let's see whether it is following same steps or not i'm not concentrating uh, the try blocks things now only just for connecting and then executing the query I told five steps. Now let's see. First starts with some. Here it is Oracle. Ah, before that, you need to import the module also. Import module create a connection object. Okay, I'll write like this. So now if you check, first step is what import module. This is the first step. 
based on these steps, I'm copying so that you'll get idea. And then what is the second step? So what, first step itself, create a connection object. We need to provide that username, password, and then, you know, if you're connecting in local host, this local host, uh, that server host name we will provide. And then we will connect based on this. So something, I'm just only taking till here. Okay. So now module name dot connect is the syntax. Module name dot connect is the syntax and we provide username, password and then local host. It will check in the local host this db connection and then it will create a connection object here so this is object okay connection object and after that this is a create creation connection object sorry uh, connection object and then we should create a cursor object so cursor object is something whatever the name you created for a connection object we use like cursor equal to con dot cursor like this and uh, this is the steps are same for any database. That's the reason I'm just giving idea. See here, con dot cursor. It created cursor object to execute any code. And then cursor dot execute, and then we are executing the query. So cursor dot execute. Cursor dot execute. And then we provide here SQL code. So this is SQL now. And you should know the SQL right here. This is SQL query. Only these two steps Python now. And then here SQL query we are providing. So that is executing the SQL query. And then later close the connect cursor object. Finally close the connection object. Check whether they are closing or not. See that cursor dot close, con dot close. If it created their closing in the final block, that is okay. But I'm just trying to close now first cursor block and then closing the connection block con dot close so these are the steps we follow for any database it is same now we understood oracle you can see for my sql or you can see for any other databases just try to just check random steps see this now connected Created a connection object, not executed any query then. Just created a connection object with the same mysql dot connector dot connector dot connector means model name dot connect. Username, password it provided. And then local host details. And database name if you want you can provide that, but first you need to create a DB name, right? So not executed any query. So maybe I'll show you this in a different way. Yeah. Here is the one. See, created a connection object, created cursor object, and then executed with the cursor object. And then after that, you need to close that. So there is no closing here. But you must need to close. That is the best practice generally. You must need to close, but okay. Steps, if you see. These were MySQL, right? You name it any database, it will be same. So imported the model. MySQL dot connector connector is a model name dot connect. Username password it provided. And then created a cursor object. Cursor object, how it created? Connection object dot cursor. So what is the connection object name? MyDB. MyDB dot cursor. And then it created what? Cursor object and through cursor object, we are executing the SQL query. And then close this cursor object. So my cursor is the cursor object name dot close. My DB dot close. That's it. So you can 
randomly check any database these are the steps i'll just go through now some since i have mysql i'm trying to copy the same code here and uh, i'll edit based on our requirement and then we'll see okay let me just copy first here and before that let me check whether this module already installed i installed already this module as well okay i have mysql also i installed this module so if you check import mysql dot connector it is there i installed you know how to install the module pip install you can use so if i run the code day 23 underscore script dot py you can see no error okay and then I'm using localhost. My username, when I installed database MySQL, I provided my username as Babu. And password I provided as 1234. I six, I think. Let me check. I six. it's one two three four so it accepted if you check this my db nothing it's a just object it created what connection object so you can write try block now if it is connected then only i want to close the database connection otherwise i don't want to close try block you can write inside the try block we write this code and then you can create something my db equal to none and uh, if my db created in the finally block you can close that if my db not equal to none then then what my db dot close so like that you can write exception here. okay connection object created and I, then i'm creating cursor object now so how to create cursor object something like you can write any name you can write cursor equal to and then i'm just using my db dot cursor so you know this properties it is available in the modules every database model this properties available see import mysql dot connector dir of mysql dot connector you can see this the connection right so we are using connection object it is available and the connector it is available and then what we are using here something cursor it is available that is the reason we are using those properties okay so cursor object i created and print if you see cursor nothing there just we created this cursor object its object so mysql cursor nothing executed it means no command it executed now using with my cursor I'm going to I'm going to run something creating some database see so this is a DB query now I'm using same since I'm going to copy my cursor equal to I'm writing yeah so DB name let's say I'm creating something let's put the this is the db name i am creating uh, let's try to execute no error means it created but it created i want to check this db whether it created all the db names i want to check i'm just using the same till here and then let me check whether there is a command if you are already aware then you may get yeah it is there so my cursor dot execute show databases is the query whenever if you are reading the data from the database the data it comes in a tuple format we will see that so my cursor dot execute and show databases is the command to display all the available databases and i am printing that all the list using with for loop here so spurti python we created now you can see spurti python it created now there are different database names i created based on my batches 
but I'm going to use this DB name now to perform these CRUD commands. So how to do that? And then restrict, use the DB name like this, and then create a table. So I'm creating a table now. I'm trying to copy as it is. And then I'm going to modify. Yeah, I'm trying to copy this. And then I'm going to modify based on my requirement here. And then provided the DB name is Sporty Python, which we created. database name I am giving this now in this database I am creating what my cursor dot execute create a table so table is uh, table name is customers name where care 255 this is a SQL again you should aware of the database like uh, the data types and all how to create this so where care 255 and then name Sorry, address uh, where card to if I am providing just a minute. Okay, so it created now table, right? So let me yeah let me run this it creates a table under spurti python there is a some error my cursor my db dot cursor and then cursor name is my cursor only where is the error then Line number 11, there is a syntax error it is showing. Means. Yeah. So, two times actually I provided it seems here. Okay, now it created that table and if you want to check, you can check with show tables. For your understanding, I'm just executing each and every query separately. In this, uh, in this DB name, we created one table, right? So if you want to check the table, so this is the one here, show tables. What is the table name? Spurti Python. So it will display that. Sorry, uh, Spurti Python is a database name, but inside that it will cre it creates what table name is customers. Sorry. So customers is the table name we created. created this. And then now I'm going to use this now customers table. And uh, I'm inserting some data. So you just copy these commands, already it is there. So this is how inserting the data. My cursor dot execute and commit to save. And if you want to check how many records it updated, you can check this. I'm executing it now. One record it inserted. And I want to run select query now. So select query can just run it. So this is the code select query, right? Copy this code and then see here. And this lines. Okay, so you can just copy and modify, that's it. Now if you see whatever the record we added, it is displaying. 
but are we using you know like am i connecting sql shell or sql workbench to execute these queries no right everything i am doing with python code only so with the python python program itself we are connecting to the database and we are writing some sql queries and we are executing the queries likewise you can automate any sql related so that is the reason if you are good in see if you are not aware what is a select query then that is difficult so you must aware of that sql queries as well to run this right so that's the reason python skill that platform skill and then how to use that platform related modules you aware of it so i hope it is clear now so how we are connecting and then how we create a database how we create a table and how we insert the data how we execute with selector you can follow the same steps update and all so you can see delete update those things also similar kind of steps so any questions in this now anyone so same seems people getting bored and then dropped some people okay fine so with this i completed uh, working with the database also and if any other pending things i'll share maybe like uh, my regular sessions uh, i'll record it right so i'll share that recording we can go through it so that's all then from my end i have covered today working with json working with the database and exception handling concept more important concept okay thank you all then